Hello Zero K fans and welcome to Nanoly Zidane. I'm your host Chad of Fury333 and we're going to have an exhibition match stream as usual today. Although, before we start, I will point out that there is a tournament planned for next week. It is a 1v1 tournament that's going to be starting at 12 p.m. UTC or 5 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time or 8 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time and I think somewhere near like 8 or so in the evening in Australia. I'm not totally sure about Australia's time, but it's basically starting... I think it's yet, 7 or 8 p.m. in Australia. So yeah, that's next week, August 6th. But this week is an exhibition match, because it's not a tournament. So we're going to be starting out with a game between Dynefront and 400 on Iceland. Which is a map I haven't seen in a while. It's a very large map. Very vehicle-friendly map. Although it's one of those maps that, despite its size, you see a lot of different factories. We have 400 going for Cloaky Bots, which still works out pretty well. And Dimefront going for the Light Vehicle Factory, which, like I said, makes a fair amount of sense given the size of the map. Though, honestly, the map, really due to the amount of choke points, doesn't really favor vehicles as much as one would think. I mean, it's still good because of the size, but it's not like you can't play Cloaky or can't play Shields or anything else. Like, you're pretty free on this map, actually. I think it's pretty open. The strategy space is not that limited by the size of the map. The only thing is, because it is a large map, you do get the same large map play where a lot of stuff's built up and then torn down, and it's really hard to figure out exactly where things are going to remain stable. Because that's just... That's just how this game works. I mean, you have a lot of things that... It's it's weak. You know, a lot of your expansions are fairly weak. A lot of your construction you can't really defend easily, and on a map this large, you're spreading out very thin. So that's the one thing that Dimefront will have an easier time dealing with in 400. Because 400, okay, they have Glaives, those are pretty fast, but Dimefront's gonna have Ravagers and Scorchers, which are both about as fast as Glaives, though right now Dimefront going entirely for levelers, working on defense, not even bothering too much with offense. They did mention in the chat that this is not their strongest map. Oh, sorry, no, 400 mentioned that, my mistake. Other way around, 400 apparently is the one who's weak on this map. And unfortunately just lost a Conjurer to a Dart. I mean, it's something it could have done to defend itself, so not surprising. But yeah, that's a bad start for 400. They're already behind in Metal Extraction, well, Metal Extractor Construction. They don't have any, they have Defenders being built up to deal with the Dart, but they don't have any workers up there. The Commander going further south to try to expand over there, while at the same time Dimefront's Commander going north, but Dimefront already expanding along the plateau south of their base, so Dimefront getting ahead pretty quickly. At this point, it's not a huge deal. There's only a couple metal difference, but that will grow. I mean, the only thing is that's kind of working in 400's favor is that Dying Friend right now does have... They have the Mason here that's not really on the path to go to any other metal extractors, but that Mason's going to be building up wind generators, which means that there's going to be less of an energy deficit, so Dying Friend's going to have a much faster time setting up their power infrastructure. Because you obviously need that, and 400... While they do have a decently healthy one... Actually, I don't know. 400 is actually focusing a bit on energy just to make sure that they can make use of the metal. But now, Dying Friend, now you see the advantage. Now they're getting ahead. There we go. That is... That is where it's going to go. When you have that right there, you have that energy advantage. Or, sorry, metal advantage now, 17. And the energy being built up as well with the wind generators being not the focus. Actually, it's solar plants that are being built up, apparently. Yeah, here we are. Solar collectors being built up. Much more reliable for that. And... 400 now finally catching up again in metal. I mean, they are getting these southern expansions, which are helping, but Dimefriend is going to be maintaining a consistent lead in metal. And of course, with all the wind generators they're building up here, they're going to be, and solar collectors down here as well, they're going to be able to maintain a consistent production advantage for the next minute or two. So Dimefriend starting out in a very strong position. 400 now finally able to start building up that northern plateau. The thing of this plateau is that you actually do have. Yeah, 0 0.6 to 2.5, very strong wind, compared to the ground level, which 0.4 to 2.5 is still not bad. Like, Iceland overall supports wind, except for very near the water. Like, 0.4 to 2.5 is okay, 0 0.6 to 2.5, that's definitely where you build wind generators. Like, 0.5 or 0.6 minimum, that's roughly the threshold, I'd say. Because the vast majority of the time, it's going to be more worth it than solar collectors, and the rest of the time, it's still going to be at least, well, for the cost of a solar collector, one energy. So, less than a Zola Collector, but still close. And for the same cost as Zola Collector, it's not bad. But that's a small amount of the time. 
Anyway, Dying Throne with a very strong energy infrastructure, 400 with a considerably weaker one, although Dying Throne, like I said, a lot of it's wind, but even then, at minimum, this much wind would be able to support what they have right now. So Dying Throne going for a bit more of an economic build. Like, Dying Throne's really focused on getting their economy going, not raiding at all. 400 hasn't really been able to set up a lot of raiders. They have some units staking out common expansion locations. They have the warrior down here. They have a glaive behind a tree over to the northwest. And they had a glaive over here. A couple glaives, actually, but those have been destroyed. Dying Friends leveled are here dealing with that. And now Dying Friend going out looks like just for defense. The slashers don't seem to be used for raiding right now. They're just used to protect this one mason going out up front. And 400 has managed to more or less catch up. Yeah, big army of conjurers going north. Not as much spread, but definitely with all the build power being pushed into these metal extractors, they're going to come up within a few seconds. Yeah, as you can see right here. Very rapid metal extractors. So 400 focusing on building up a small area of the map very rapidly, while Dying Friend, on the other hand, focusing on building up lots of areas in the map. They have the center being built up. The south was being cleared. But it looks like it's not being built up as much. Actually, it looks like Dying Friend's starting to stall on their construction. 400's getting ahead in their metal. And at the same time, they are getting vulnerable. Though Dying Friend coming in for some raiding. These slashers should... Sorry, scorchers. Not going for anything. They're actually going to run into this warrior. That's not good. Not for them, anyway. For the warrior, it's fine. But yeah. Those scorchers, unfortunately, did not do anything. So Dying Friend still falling behind in metal. However, more scorchers to the south. But there are defenses to the south. Lotus is able to get rid of at least one of them. Maybe two? No, just one. But another warrior already ready in the south. Moving unusually quickly for a warrior, actually. What the heck? That... Do warriors move that fast? I've never seen a warrior move that fast before. That's strange. Well, anyway... Regardless, the warrior is able to at least do nothing. Oh, never mind. No, that warrior is actually open. However, it is chasing the sl slash Sir Scorchers into a Stardust. So it doesn't really matter. The Scorchers are still having to deal with some kind of machine gun defensive system. Wow, 400's really gotten this nice and robust. Like, enough static to keep things at bay with enough mobile units to at least pressure in case they need to, or to... I mean, really, the Warriors are effectively Stardusts at this point. They're just being used as slightly mobile Stardusts. And it's working. It's working really well. Dying Friend not able to really harass. Dying Friend does have a very healthy energy economy. In fact, a little bit too healthy. Going for an air switch and... Otherwise, not really doing much out of the ordinary. Still trying to build up a little bit. Still kind of falling behind. Not building the south at all. I'm a bit surprised at that, too. Dying Friend could very easily take the south at the same time they're taking the north, and they'd probably be able to get away with it. There's not a whole lot in the way, but they're focused a lot more on production. Like, I don't understand why they're not going to the south, actually. Like, they've cleared it out. They're staking it out. They could very easily take another five or six metal per second. Just right now. And that would catch them up. 400 is five metal per second ahead. And both players are using their metal as best they can. Fusion plant coming up for 400, which will basically just overcharge everything. So at this point, we will we'll see 400's overdrive just go through the roof. Dying Friend at this point with no overdrive. They have very little extra energy to use for overdrive. They have, okay, a bit of overdrive, but not much. And now 400 just about done its, the fusion plant, while at the same time, finally getting a nice little battle going on here. The Ravagers getting pushed away by the Warriors. The Warriors taking some losses, but overall doing a good job. And another warrior to get rid of even more Scorchers, while Raven's over to the side to try to get in somehow. Another Raptor going down. I mean, 400's really got the force advantage. I mean, this is kind of not the best example of how Cloakie works well on this map, but it is showing Cloakie working pretty well on this map. All things considered, it's actually kind of impressive. But the Raven's putting a stop to those warriors. At the same time, though, I mean, Fusion Plant's done. Overdrive is pretty much accounting for most of the discrepancy. Even with Dying Friend's Overdrive, 400's Overdrive is providing the discrepancy. So Dying Friend's still way ahead. Possibly building a bit too much. Another Fusion Reactor is... Really? At this point, the Overdrive is starting to become inefficient. Like, that only added another 3-ish metal per second on Overdrive. There needs to be... Okay, they are connecting more. So 400 are really worried about the grid. Really worried about Overdrive. 
Which is kind of surprising since at this point, they could probably take more of the map, but eh, I guess they don't want to. They have a nice defended section of the map. They have, they have the Stardust, they have Lotuses around. They really should get more of the map when they get the chance, but I, I see what they're trying to do. They're trying to basically to deal with the fact that their their units are slower. I mean, other than Glaives, Cloakybot units are slower than Vehicle Factory units, so 400 is probably trying to just keep the map in a relatively contained section, get as much metal as they can out of the map they have control over without overextending themselves because they can't as rapidly respond to anything going on as Dynefern can. Like, Dynefern can deal with what 400 has far more easily than 400 can deal with whatever Dynefern throws at them. And Dynefern definitely throwing. You do see a few Ravagers and Levelers coming in and nothing really in their way. These Lotuses are paper at this point. I mean, Dynefern's gonna be able to do a decent amount of damage here. Although even with all the expansions, even with the pylons, it's actually not overdriving that much. It added another three or four metal per second, but not actually not even that. It added like one or two metal per second. Really, most of the overdrive has been in the main base, and yeah, that barely affected anything at all. And 400's commander getting caught in a crossfire, and unfortunately, he's going to go down. There's nothing that can stop it. The glaive's trying to get in the way, but it's down. Dynefern doing a nice amount of damage here, knocking 400's economy down a peg, like, making it a little bit weaker. At the same time, Dynefern is taking more map control, but this is the overdrive power. 400 with far less map control taking damage, losing metal extractors, is still on par with Dynefern, who has a little bit more than half the map. Or at least is a little bit past the halfway point. Not quite half the map, but they do have more metal extractors. However, this is not going to last forever. Dynefriend actually will be able to have to deal with Striders on top of two Strider hubs, really? Okay. One of them is a Caretaker, the other one has an actual Strider hub, but presumably. Gunship plant coming up with Rapiers, which might be a little bit late. There's still two Ravagers and two Levelers coming in here. The Rocco's good choice. Those coming in and the Stingers as well are also going to be helpful. That last Ravager should probably run away. Should probably cut its losses, go around the back, and deal with everything that looks like it might actually just be staking out in case Conjurers come in. Yeah, that, that appears to be the case. That or Dynefern forgot about it. So either Dynefern forgot about that Ravager, or they're leaving it there for when 400 decides to re-expand. Because 400 knows what they're doing and is rebuilding very rapidly, which is what they should be doing. They are on point. But yeah, the only thing, of course, being that there is a Ravager here, and it will be able to take a free Metal Extractor, which actually has not paid for itself, but, no, well, whatever. I still agree. It's still a good practice, and now it's free. Now it's open. And with all this Chainsaws in play, those Swiss are not doing very well. So Dynefriend, I mean, their Air Switch, it was known about. 400 has prepared for it. They have Chainsaws everywhere. They have no Razors, just Chainsaws. And, of course, they have the Gunships, which have been seen but not really to any effect. And now Raptor's trying to get rid of some of the chainsaws. That's not, no, that is their goal. They are trying to get rid of the chainsaws. They want to open it up to the air. I mean, at this point, it's just a bunch of Swifts, but Swifts are very handy against ground. And the Rapier's trying to stop it, not able to do so. It looks like, a, was that a Merle? Yes, it was, or Impaler. Impaler. Taking care of that chainsaw, opening the area up for Swifts, and despite the Tridents, despite the... I mean, the Rapiers aren't going to do much good. They're going to try, but they're not going to do that much good. Still, the main base does have the chainsaw. These Rapiers move back. They should be able to bait some of these Swifts into the chainsaw. And there is a Razor! Okay. But they should be able to bait some of the Swifts into the chainsaws, killing more of them. But at this point, I think the skies belong to Dynefrin. 400 is not doing too hot. They are getting a Dante. Trying to retake the ground with that. Trying to retake the ground as well with some Rocco's. Get back some of this land from Dynefriend. I mean, the Overdrive's been doing a really nice job to keep 400 in the game. But 400 does want to make sure they have an economic advantage. I mean, they're slightly behind. It's not too bad. They're actually doing okay. But they don't want to be behind for too long. And I think they're doing a pretty decent job. The South has been freed a little, a little bit. The North side, however, Dynefriend's completely taken it over. 400's lost the North side. They're trying to take the south. The south is probably the better defended area for 400. 
no conjurers along here to try to help build up right away or reclaim right away. In fact, surprisingly, okay, never mind, I was about to say, surprisingly, the reclaim is not really happening, but it is actually. 400 is taking care of reclaim, and the fusion plant's actually really paying for itself now. I mean, 141 energy, 400 basically is just limited by build power, and we saw there's two strider hubs as well as like four caretakers in their base. That alone is about 70 build power. And that's not counting all the conjurers that are probably still hanging out back there. I mean, if we look, yeah, there's still some conjurers hanging out back there. Oh, three caretakers, but still, there's enough. And the factories have their own build power. Like, the reclaim will not go to waste for 400. Dynefront, on the other hand, is starting to excess a little bit. So that's getting a little bit problematic. And, yeah, 400, they're still ahead economically, but Dynefron just taking that territory, just capturing more and more of it. Commander helping out a lot, building up the defenses, really helping secure what has been taken. Although, if you look behind, I mean, yeah, okay, it's kind of been taken, and there are some defenses, but this area in the center, like this area along here, totally open. And even along here, there's a couple lotuses, really, and you can go behind the lotuses. The Ravagers are there, but a large enough army or a strong enough force, or a strong enough single unit will take care of it. And the south's being taken out as well. Okay, now 400's in some trouble. I mean, the Reclaim's doing them a lot of good, but they've just lost another six metal. Like, there's only so long that they can use Reclaim and Overdrive to make up for the lack of metal, which has been increasing. The Dante coming forward, doing everything it can to deal with this. I mean, trying to push forward. This is kind of a last-ditch effort. Dynefront has taken most of the map, and while I did point out it's fairly open, there isn't a lot that 400 has to actually deal with this, and they've got to focus on the forces that are attacking. They've got to focus on the Ravagers, the Levelers. They're choosing to focus on the Commander, which makes sense as well. I mean, you want to make sure that you're opponent can't build up with impunity right in front of your base. But they I hope they have units to deal with this. I mean, they've got some... They have some warriors, I guess, and Rocco's. That's about it. Not much. The Stardust will help a little bit, but not too much. The commander, that's what's really taking the damage. Dying Friends commander should be going down. What does it have on hand? Bardic Gleam, Nanolathe, and goes down, burying the commander in the... Wow, what? Okay, it buried the Dante in the process, but it was dead. Just the last bit of nano lathe particles coming out of the dead commander. That was actually, I think, the last bit that was actually needed, too, to stop the Dante from getting out of there. Still able to fight back, but yeah, the, the Ravens are actually managing to get in, and now 400 quite behind in metal. The overdrive is helping, but it's not enough. I mean, there's so few metal extractors that's overdriving, it's nowhere, nowhere near as efficient as it used to be. And the Gunja plant being reclaimed in order to pay for another Dante. And Swift's coming in to help deal with the Dante. I mean, the Ravens will be coming back in a moment, too. Yeah, there they are. Lots of Ravens coming in here. That will get rid of the Dante. But that's also buying 400 a lot of time. I mean, yes, it's bad the Dante died. But there's a lot of time being bought here. 400 able to get another Dante up. And there's nothing else to really dig it in. The commander's dead. So the only other things that could dig it in that quickly would be a bunch of masons, which would die faster. Although, admittedly, you could also have more of them at a time. 400 switching to planes, probably for swifts, and that will... I don't think that'll help. I mean, it might help a little bit to take back the sky. In fact, they're probably going to go for hawks, just to try to take back the sky specifically. But at this point, and there's so much map control that's been lost. 400, not even... Well, they're reclaiming to the south. They're going to try to retake the south. The Dante, as far as I can tell, is being used essentially just as a protection force for the for all of these units here. All the Conjurers, that's all that's being used for protecting them, which is really not the best place for it to be. There's all these Ravagers here in front. That's what it needs to help fight. I mean, yes, it's good. Get rid of that Ravager to the south, and then move around and flank here. Like, you do not... They didn't know they're there. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, 400 does not actually have radar coverage. I thought they had radar coverage. My mistake. I mean, they will now. They do have a vulture. Or had a vulture. They have a vulture corpse that's falling. I mean, they had a vulture briefly, so they probably saw what was going on. But yeah, they are going for hawks. That makes sense. I mean, you need more of them than just one. One of them will die to swifts. You need, like, half a dozen at least at this point. Half a dozen to a dozen to get rid of the Swifts that have been built up, and then get rid of the Ravens with impunity afterwards. And now 400 sees what's here. Hopefully the Dante moves along to flank. No, no, it's just 
Going straight in. Not even flanking. Just bypassing the forces entirely. Okay. Well. That's interesting. It might work because it might cause 400 to move all these forces back. But I think what'll happen... No, no, never mind. Four, sorry. Dying front. 400 actually moving the, the Dante up to try to deal with everything here. Try to deal with all the Ravagers moving in. And it's kind of getting pincered. No support forces either. The Dante is on its own. No Roccos. All the money going to Hawks. Another Dante being built up at 400 with only 26 metal per second. It's not going to work out super well. They should be able to get rid of most of the Ravagers. Okay, there's the support forces. Oof. Well, sort of. And the Dante surviving those Ravens. Wow, really? Okay, that that's good. Survive the Ravens. Help deal with the rest of these Ravagers. Unfortunately, ah, last ra No, really? What? Wow, 84 health left. I had 884, so that's not entirely surprising, but one more shot. There we go. That gets rid of the, that gets rid of the Dante. And the next Dante is going to take another minute and a half or so. Yeah, it's just... Minute and a half, that's way too long. This this game is over. Dying Friend just... They got map control. And 400, I think, really was trying to just hit some strategic points rather than getting rid of the army and then pushing forward. And I think when they first built the Dante and had the Sport Rockos and everything, they could have pushed forward and helped get rid of all these Ravagers. They wouldn't have gotten rid of the Commander immediately. But they've been able to get rid of the Ravagers, which would have allowed them to get rid of these Ravagers because it wouldn't have been all these Ravagers together. I mean, 16 Ravagers, 8 Levelers. A lot of those were there from that first Dante. I mean, 400 is really holding on impressively. I mean, they're rebuilding, which is good. They're reclaiming, which is also good. But they're not really on par. Like, they're not able to get economic parity right now. And that's it. 400 throwing in the towel. And... Dynathrone's not even building a Disco Rave Party. Why aren't they going on about Disco Rave Party? They're building missile silos. They're not building Disco Rave Party. <laughs> Which I've never seen in a 1v1, but yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, you need like 100 metal per second to build a DRP. Don't go for it. So yeah, that's game. 400 throws in the towel. <sighs> I mean, I can see why 400 went for the reduced map control, trying to go for overdrive instead of map control, because they did have a slower army. But that being said, I mean, that works okay if when they had a little less than half the map, but after losing that north side, it kind of fell apart. And I can see why they wanted to retake the north side, but at that point, they had an army in front of them, and they, they still don't have radar. I guess they never really had much radar. I mean, they must have had radar at some point. No, I guess they didn't. I don't actually recall them building up radar at any point. Yeah, so they didn't see this army outside their base. Didn't really see what was going on, and Diamond essentially just had that Ravager army hid in plain sight. Because 400 did not see any of it. Now, okay, Inferno's coming in. Finishing the area off. Yeah, there we go. What the heck? Oh, are they building a Screamer on a hill? Alright, whatever. Oh, ouch. Apparently a tick got produced. Apparently a tick got produced and blew up. But yeah, that's... That's game. AOS on the fusion plant, also part of game. Like, everything's game. Oh, that's Dying for his Vulture. Wait, did 400 never have... I don't think 400 ever had a Vulture then. But yeah, 400... I think they were really trying to just... And still trying to take out the North... Okay, I can see... You now get rid of the Missile Silo. That kind of makes sense. What I'm surprised by is that... Given all the air coming in, that... They aren't... Well, I guess they don't have the money to support it with a bunch of Gremlins. But they aren't supporting it with a bunch of Gremlins. Like, they aren't bringing in two dozen Gremlins to get rid of all of those Ravens coming in. And that was not a fair trade. Dante for a nuclear silo. Definitely in favor of nuclear silo. Okay, missile silo, I mean. Not nuclear. Alright, well, that was that. Man, income was really on par for the most part. 400 with a lot more reclaim, but still, the income was really close. Dying from with a bit more excess as well. But yeah, overall... Yeah, see, that's the one thing, is that until the middle of the game, 400 was slightly ahead. And then just... This is also where they started losing map control. They started losing unit value, and then... Started losing map control. Actually, this would have been... What battle was this? 
This, I think, was that first assault. Because you can see their growth rate is still the same. So there's just a lot of units lost for 400. Then 400 of Dynfrin's army grew at the same rate and shrunk at the same rate until they lost even more in another raid and then another raid and then finally got destroyed. Actually, these are Dante's dying. It's the first Dante dying, second Dante died, third Dante died. Yeah, that's... And at the same time, Dynfrin never really lost any of their Ravagers at that point. Never lost anything at that point, really. Anyway, that's that. So next game is going to be between, I think it was Felthos and Kshatriya on Living Lands. Right, so stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes.